All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of O365A. In this episode, we're going to be talking about some uh, important Microsoft 365 updates that you need to know about. So um, there's a, I think we're going to cover four or five topics today. And uh, Kurt, why don't you lead us off with that? Sure. So uh, a real important change that came into effect yesterday on September 1st was that uh, Microsoft changed the level of detail available in the Microsoft 365 usage analytics reports. And basically the change is that they anonymized the username by default. And this goes back to uh, data privacy. And specifically, uh, when you look at the uh, message center update regarding this change, <clears throat> it uh, it's for GDPR purposes. Uh, the, the idea being, and I'm going to have trouble pronouncing this, but it's pseudomization, which is basically the anonymization of the user username. And again, it's specifically aimed so that you can't pinpoint usage down to a specific user. So this used to be on by default. It's now off by default. And what you'll see when you go into, for example, the usage reports in the Microsoft 365 admin center, instead of a username, you'll see uh, what looks like a GUID. It's just a, a mangled number, so it means nothing. And this affects a number of things. Um, not only the usage reports in the M365 admin center, but anything um, that uses these reports from that graph endpoint, which of course the M365 admin center used. And Microsoft Teams, for example, the Teams admin center, all the Teams uh, user-based reports there, you'll see all the usernames um, anonymized. So uh, it's quite a big change and a number of organizations depend on third-party reporting software for usage and analytics. And this will also affect those solutions which rely on that graph endpoint data. What you can do is turn identification back on so it's now off by default and that setting to turn it back on is in the uh, M365 admin center. And even when it's turned on, there's only certain admin roles that will be able to uh, see it. Basically any admin role and the report reader role will then be able to see the user identifiable username. Um, but global reader and usage summary report reader roles will still um, not have access to that user level information. So if you do want to turn it back on, at least there are some guardrails on the admin roles that can see it and can't see it. Um, so yeah, that in a nutshell is is the change. And again, yesterday that came into effect. So if you start to see weird things for your usernames, your reports for Microsoft 365, including SharePoint, Exchange, Teams, uh, that's what's going on. All right, uh, over to you, Michael. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. Uh, I have a tongue twister of an update. Uh, this one was announced at the end of August. Uh, so there's a, a tech community blog post on the from the Azure uh, AD team. So basically, the the title is Azure AD uh, Graph Deprecation. Uh, migrate your your apps to access the licensing, manage APIs for Microsoft Graph. And then there's a message center post as well. It says retirement of Azure AD graph and license man uh, line, alignment uh, or assignment operations and updating to license manage APIs at PowerShell. So what does that actually mean? Uh, so the, the Azure AD graph APIs, they're being retired, and this is going to come into effect June 30th, 2022. And so what this typically impacts is if you're using the MS, OL, uh, MS Online or the Azure AD PowerShell, to assign licenses. So this would be the set-msol user license. Uh, any of the properties for license assignment under the new dash msol user, as well as under the Azure AD module, the set Azure AD user license. So uh, these will now no, you won't be able to use those, those properties. So you'll want to make sure you're moving towards the Microsoft Graph PowerShell and leverage the set-mg user license. So uh, kind of the overall strategy with that, that Azure AD PowerShell module is to start moving towards the, the graph modules. So uh, make sure you're, you're looking at your scripts and starting to plan to, to move away from those uh, older uh, modules that we were using to, to manage, manage AD users, Azure AD users. With that, I'll throw it to Hab to talk about some, some emergency calling. 
Yeah, thanks, Michael. Uh, so from an emergency calling perspective, on uh, I think it was August 23rd, um, there was an announcement in the message center for dynamic E911 for US work from home users. So this uh, particular update is just meant uh, specifically for all the US tenants or users within the US. Um, um, it's basically uh, helps support the compliance, I guess, for the US FCC requirement uh, for the Ray Bombs Act. So again, it's not intended for use outside the United States. And what the feature is actually is so that uh, because everybody is working from home and there's going to be, you know, obviously this new hybrid um, work from home capabilities um, uh, where, you know, you may not um, or I guess the Teams client doesn't know what your home address is, right? So if you are in the office and all of the configuration is set, it'll understand, you know, where you are sitting in the office that if in the event that you dial 911, it has the capability to find out where you are located um, for, you know, for the, uh, I guess the emergency responders to get to you. But when you're at home, it doesn't know that. So there's a feature that you can, new feature that you can turn on in the admin center or via PowerShell. Um, which basically allows uh, external location lookup mode. And what that will do is that in the Teams client, once it launches, it, if it can't identify where your location is, it will allow you to edit your location and, and search where you're actually located. Um, and then that information will be stored within the Microsoft Teams client. And then if you dial 911 uh, from your Teams client at home, then it will uh, send that information to the PSAP and the emergency location uh, will be sent as well. Um, so that information is there. So it's definitely a really, um, a uh, great feature that's coming out uh, right now. Obviously, it's for the US. I'd be interested to see if they are going to expand that feature to the rest of the, um, uh, I guess, the rest of the world, right? Uh, that have essentially uh, calling plan capabilities or even with uh, direct routing as well. So it'll be a definitely interesting um, feature to see um, moving forward. Uh, with that, I will pass it over to Dino to uh, give us an update on end-to-end uh, -end en encryption. Yes, thanks, Hab. Uh, last but not least, let's talk about some end-to-end -end encryption. So also within the Message Center, uh, updated just this past August 24th, Microsoft's talked about um, the rollout of end-to-end -end encryption. So, so far, uh, previous to this, Teams didn't have the capability to do end-to-end -end encryption. And this, this is the announcement that speaks to that. So this will mean that from if you're in a one-to-one -one call or, or in a meeting where all, where all endpoints are required to be encrypted, you can have the entire contents of that um, meeting encrypted. So uh, Teams initially will use, uh, will support the option to use end-to-end -end encryption for ad hoc one-to-one -one Teams VoIP calls. Um, you know, and to support customer security and compliance requirements, IT will have full control of who can use this end-to-end -end encryption in the organization. Um, when will this happen? I think uh, they're saying that it's going to be late September. Previously, it was supposed to be this month. Um, so expect the rollout to be completed by early October. Um, perhaps even later, we'll have to keep an eye on that. In terms of how it'll affect your organization for admins, a new policy is going to be added, um, and there'll be a parameter to enable the one-to-one -one encry uh, calls encryption for one-to-one -one calls. The default value is going to be off, so no impact uh, will happen unless it's enabled, which is good. So the admin can turn that feature on for a select set of users or the entire tenant, and that's an important um, distinction there. Um, for end users, if it's allowed by the admin, the end user will be able to see the end-to-end -end encryption option in their settings. And by default, it will be off until it's switched on by the user. There's an option in the, your privacy settings and teams. Um, if it's end-to-end uh, -end encryption calls will only support the basic call features like audio, video, screen sharing, chat, and, and things like call escalation, transferring, recording of calls, which is a pretty big one, and, and some of the other call controls won't be available, obviously, if it's encrypted um, and you, you won't be able to do a recording because it'll have to get decrypted to do that. So it'll be important for admins to understand who this feature should be turned on for and who it shouldn't be turned on for. Maybe it's 
and also equally uh, important to educate users on, on the usage of it. So again, in terms of preparation, um, you know, the initial release will only support the basic calling features. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen with things like call escalation and recordings and captioning. If, there, if those will all be addressed, that remains to be seen. Um, again, this feature only works if both or both parties in a one-to-one -one call have enabled the feature, obviously. And it's only going to be available on the desktop and mobile clients at this point. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to you, Hub. Yeah, no, thanks, guys. I mean, uh, definitely, uh, uh, you know, a lot of really interesting features that are, I guess, uh, coming out or deprecated in Michael's case, right? In switching, uh, in switching, uh, you know, the the way you access the the Graph API. But uh, yeah, I want to give out this uh, this episode just to you know keep everybody up to date with uh, some of the key features that we felt from the Microsoft 365 perspective um, that uh, you know our listeners uh, should know about. So. Um, with that, thanks everybody for listening in and hopefully we'll catch you on our next episode. Thank you. See you. Thanks.